The second of the OWASP top 10 risks is cryptographic failures. Now to summarize cryptographic failures, the best way to do it is to determine if protection is needed for the data that you're talking about, both in transit and at rest. Um, either one is really important and sometimes you may need both. Many types of sensitive data, for example, will fall under very specific privacy laws, so GDPR in Europe, or regulations such as PCI DSS, you know, relating to card information. And in those laws and regulations, there will quite often be some really good guidance on how you need to protect that data. It may not go into the technical details of applying certain cryptographies or, or protocols, um, but it will tell you what you need to be trying to achieve, let's say. Now, for all such data, it is recommended that you don't send it in clear text. So we need to be checking, are we sending data in clear text? And if so, why are we still doing that? Why can't it be encrypted? There might be a valid reason, but then again, there might not be. It might just be something that you haven't updated. Are any legacy ciphers or protocols being used? Uh, old ciphers, old protocols are usually broken, hence why they're old or legacy. And as a result, they're, they're not necessarily fit for purpose. Are certificates being trusted without appropriate validation? So are we using certificates and blindly accepting them without checking that they have expired or checking to see if they haven't been revoked? Um, are deprecated hash functions in use? So MD5 is a really classic example. Um, it's old, it's legacy. We don't really want to be using it, so we shouldn't be. Maybe go for SHA-256 instead. And are any cryptographies being used correctly? So where you've got cryptographies applied to your technology, are they definitely implemented correctly? Because if not, that could lead to a security misconfiguration and as a result, a weakness in your technology. Now, the best way to prevent cryptographic failures is to encrypt all sensitive data at rest and encrypt all sensitive data in transit. So good examples might be using TLS, HSTS, or FS. Ensure up-to-date protocols, algorithms and keys are used. So just going back to those legacy references in the summary, we don't want to be using them, so we need to be going through our technology on a semi-regular basis and just checking those protocols, checking those algorithms, making sure they're up-to-date and that they're not using legacy weak protocols or algorithms. And we need to be storing passwords using strong adaptive and salted hashing functions uh, with work factor, so a delay factor, such as argon2, scrypt, or bcrypt, or even pbkdf2. So some really good bits and pieces there on how you can improve your cryptographic uh, uses inside of your technologies. And what we'll do now is we will start exploring a, a, an example. To show you an example of cryptographic failure, we're going to look at one of them very simple questions that was first being asked where it says, is text being sent in clear text or is it being encrypted? And to do that, we're going to use a legacy bit of technology called Telnet and we're going to do a Telnet connection to a device I have on my local network and then we're going to repeat that connection test using SSH. During that test, what we're also going to be doing is using Wireshark to sniff the traffic and then that way we'll be able to see the information being sent via telnet across the network and the information being sent via ssh across the network so we can see the difference of clear text and encrypted i know this is something that a lot of people may not have seen but it may seem very obvious so just getting that visualization of what's going on can sometimes help so i'm going to open up a terminal and we're going to run wireshark to begin with So we get that up and running, and we're going to listen to my wireless network adapter. And we can see some traffic coming through. So I'll just minimize that for the moment, and we'll minimize that. What we'll then do is we will start a telnet session to an IP address of a device on my network, which is aptly named Atlanta001. And I will log in. So username, password, and you can see that I've logged in via Telnet. You can tell because at the top in the terminal, I've logged in as user at Lenovo, which is the host name of this device. And at the bottom, I've logged in the Pi at Atlanta001, which is the device I've tried to communicate with. Now, if we go to Wireshark, and we'll stop the traffic, we'll put a filter on. So it'll be IP 102, 
and on this filter what we'll do is we will just quickly look for a telnet session there we go so some telnet data there as we can see when we click on it but what we're going to do is actually follow the TCP stream and when we do so we can see in plain text that what's been sent over the network is a login that says pi although admittedly it comes up twice there and a password so at this point we've gained the user's credentials on the network if we were listening and that's because they were sent in plain text in clear text which is really bad so let's repeat that process so we're going to start listening again continue with our saving just clear the filter and we will close that terminal session we'll start a new terminal session and we'll SSH with those exact same credentials to the same device and you can see we're also logged in again but this time via SSH so username at host and username at host when we're on a device we can also check that by uh, typing in hostname and it tells us okay so if we go back to Wireshark and if we stop the traffic we'll apply the same filter as before we will look for the SSH traffic and we will follow the TCP stream again now this time we can see that there is a lot more information in this but to add to it it's also an awful lot of nonsense it's very difficult to understand what's going on um, at the top whoops yep at the top you have a list of the possible protocols and ciphers that are available and hashes for SSH sessions but beyond that there's nothing that's clearly obvious that says username password login there's nothing that highlights credentials very clearly which means we've achieved our objective here by applying encryption through SSH and that makes it a lot safer to communicate over SSH rather than Telnet. Okay, hopefully this has helped provide some clarity on cryptographic failures and hopefully this is a good lesson to have learned from. If you like it, click the like button down below, uh, leave a comment if you wish and uh, thank you for watching.